I don't know if you guys know this or not, but uh, the Winter Olympics, uh, they have an event, uh, to my surprise, called the Two-Man Luge. Now, you might think the two-man luge in your mind's eye is a couple of luges tied together where guys are fighting each other with soap and a sock or some shit, like Mad Max style. But no, to my surprise, uh, the two-man luge is uh, one man on a luge, and then another man directly on top of that fucking man. It's just a man on a man on a luge. I couldn't even believe my eyes. I thought I was having an acid flashback, and it just seemed like too many fucking legs. What's going on? That couldn't be a man on a man. On a luge? I mean, how could that be fucking possibly an event? I like to imagine that event started when one guy got cut from the luge team, and then he's like, well, what about if I put a guy on top of me? Is that another event? Let's just call that a different sport. Which I would have to say it is a different sport, actually. But like all these other events in the Olympics, usually like like the javelin is like hunting in the savanna. Um, what is this? Truly, what fucking activity prompted the two-man luge? Was the top of a mountain on fire? Two men and one sled? Like, all right, buddy, there's only one way off this mountain, and it's gay as fuck. get a bronze for not getting an erection? <laughs> that is the straightest man alive. Just has an ass bouncing around on him for two minutes. Then he has to stand up in a skin tight outfit to show the world how fucking straight he is. A high risk event. I don't think I'm straight enough for the fucking two man luge. <laughs> the guy at the bottom doesn't even know he's going down a fucking mountain because there's a man on top of him. He literally has one job and that is to pull the brake. The guy at the top is like, yo buddy, it's over, just pull the brake. That fucking guy can practice that at home on a couch. Just have a guy bounce around on him for fucking two minutes. I'm like, alright bro, it's, it's over. You, you didn't kiss again. You are the greatest of all time. He must have been thinking of baseball or some shit, I don't know. Uh, well, I'll tell you a little, little something about myself, guys. I, I had to do a will recently. I don't know if anyone's ever had to do a will, but uh, if you drink a lot on a Sunday, maybe you want to. <laughs> I had to make a will, and it makes you think about things you never have to think about in life in general. Like, I had to decide whether I wanted to be cremated or if I wanted, like, an open casket or whatever. And I didn't really know, I don't have a religious reason to do one or the other, and I'm kind of mulling over, and I'm like, you know what, fuck. And after a while, I was like, you know what, fuck it. I'm just gonna go half and half. <laughs> I'm just gonna burn my goddamn legs off. Leave nothing but a torso in the casket. Like, I don't know, he was a perfectionist, he didn't like his legs. He loved his goddamn torso, though. Always talking about his torso. He wanted to be buried in a wife beater so he had one last, last chance to look at the gun show. They buried from, with a pint glass full of ashes that were my legs. I don't know, he wanted to drink his leg ashes. He died like he lived with no fucking explanations. A maniac, this man. I've been working on this and I encourage everyone to do it. I have a, a detailed treasure map in my pocket at all times. In case, in case I get hit by a bus or, or just collapse in front of a stranger and die, I want to be able to, with my last breath, be like, yo, bro, you're gonna have to dig it up. <laughs> and then he's gonna hide it and be like, I don't know, the guy's conked out, I don't know what's going on. And then he'd go to the X and dig it up. And it's just gonna be a framed picture of me shirtless digging the hole. <laughs> The caption that says, never trust a stranger, bro. <laughs> Always teaching lessons, that's what I'm all about. <laughs> oh man, guys, we got a lot of beautiful uh, ladies in the house tonight. Give it up for the beautiful ladies. <laughs> As if they need any more fucking help. But I, guys, I think we gotta be, collectively, we gotta be a little bit tougher on, uh, on hot chicks. <laughs> Because everyone's trying to get with them, obviously, and uh, every guy wants to get with a hot chick, but uh, be beautiful women are in the unusual circumstance.
that they don't have to know anything if they don't want. <laughs> and when I say anything, I, I mean, I mean, I don't mean math or science, I mean fucking anything. I do believe it's possible that a really beautiful woman could not know a language. <laughs> still wouldn't go that bad. There'll still be a dude across from her at Red Lobster going like, I don't know, blink if you want the shrimp salad. <laughs> Would you like me to take off my pants? Are you interested in that at all? Buddy of mine, great with the lady, he's been a beautiful Hooters waitress. And uh, he didn't want to go out with her. I was like, dude, why not? She's a beautiful woman. And he's like, nah, man, she might be the dumbest chick of all time. I was like, well, like, how dumb could she be? Give her a chance. And he's like, how dumb she, could she be? She, he showed me her bio for Miss Hooters, which is apparently a thing. And she came on, really beautiful woman. She came on and she was like, well, I like cupcakes. And I'm looking for a guy to treat me like a princess. <coughs> And I'm like, that's the exact same bio as my five-year-old niece, Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> Verbatim. You'd be walking around this earth 23 years and be like, uh, tell me about your time here. I'm like, I'll tell you something about cupcakes, buddy. Delicious. Do you know any princes? But I, I got a couple of little nieces, and it's the first time I've had like access to little girls. Oh, well, I mean, access to little girls. <laughs> Weird way to say it, really. I don't mean it. I mean, I haven't encountered little girls very much like this. And, and I thought we were pushing gender roles on these little girls with Barbies and, and all this uh, princess stuff. But what I learned uh, through these little girls growing up is that the only way that you could get a little girl to not like princess shit is if you didn't tell them that there is a thing that is princess. Because as soon as they know that princess is a thing, they're like, that's what I'm talking about right there. Maybe the shoes, the dress, whatever the fuck's on her head. I want it all and I want it in four fucking colors. And I need it now. Now. My youngest niece wants to be a fucking mermaid princess. That's the least attainable life goal of all time. It is a fictional animal and she wants to be its royalty. She's gonna wade out to Lake Ontario and meet the fucking prince of the mermaid. And then you see like a little boy and he just wants like a fake hard hat and a fake tool belt. Just wants to be in a fucking union. <laughs> He's just looking for a steady nine to five. <laughs> be like, all right, and now I want an hour for lunch. <laughs> Benefits, whatever the fuck they are. And you pass me that fake screwdriver, I'm gonna work on this plastic electrical box for you. <laughs> Probably why we have trouble sometimes relating to each other as we get older. We have a whole bunch of construction workers trying to fuck princesses. <laughs> it's a pretty odd relationship, really. 